So there I was playing a bunch of licks that I've stolen shamelessly from guitarist Jonathan Kreisberg. So I've transcribed a few licks of his and I was playing them there over um, invitation. So I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to show you those licks. I'm going to talk about the idea of stealing licks as opposed to transcribing whole solos, right? So there's a difference there that we need to talk about. And uh, I'm also going to talk about how I can take those licks or you can take those licks and use them over a tune, in this case, in notation. So I've, I've made a little etude that I'm going to show you. Uh, so all that and more, let's get right into it. So all these licks are from a record called Wave Upon Wave. So the first one is kind of F sharp minor. I'm not sure of the harmonic situation, to be honest, uh, but it works over F sharp minor. So it sounds like this. I've slowed it down a bit so that the algorithm don't find me. Plus it enables me to actually play them. <laughs> notice that, that I'm not transcribing the whole lick. I'm just kind of taking what I want. So this is what I have. So there's like a 6-8 kind of subdivision going on, right? So the point here is not to exactly to know transcribe exactly as it is. I'm just kind of trying to get ideas to incorporate my, into my own playing. So, what, so let's analyze what's going on. So let's say some kind of F sharp minor, melodic minor with chromatics. You get this idea. So it's like a Coltrane pattern, right? With chromatics. There's this idea of side slipping. You play the same thing a half step down. And then back to F sharp minor. So he kind of goes out of the outside of the harmony and comes back right back in. Right? So if you understand what's going on, you can take that idea and incorporate it into any scale. That could be C major 7, right? So I'm just taking the that shape in C major and adding those chromatics. You know, perhaps. So it's a it's a seven note group, right? Sometimes he adds kind of a note. He makes it a kind of open, he adds like a ghost note and makes it a an eighth note phrase, but as triplets. I think that's what he's doing sometimes. Again, I'm not trying to steal his licks exactly as they are. I'm trying to kind of get ideas from what he's doing. So the next lick is kind of similar. So that's uh, lick number two. I could play that all day. It's kind of similar to the previous one and I hear him play this stuff all the time. So I don't want you to think that I think that Jonathan Kreisberg is a, a player with just a bunch of flashy licks, right? Like he's so much more than that. He's one of the best players on the scene. If you heard him play 
solo guitar where he plays caravan and stuff like that. Unreal. And his tone, his timing, his phrasing, and the clarity, his technique is just unbelievable. Like, there's not a lot of players on that level, I don't think, like him and Adam Rogers, Mike Marino, and a few others. So, but I'm trying to inject some flashy licks into my own playing because sometimes when I hear myself play, I feel like that's lacking. I need something kind of flashy to throw in every now and then, right? So if you never play something that is kind of, I don't know, flashy like that, it might be a little bit uh, boring if you never do it, right? Like, but you shouldn't base your playing on flashy licks. So we'll talk more about that. Let's just uh, look at this lick. So it's like an F triad with a B, a sharp 11 added. And a G triad with a C added. And then an A major triad with a D added. All those notes could be derived from some kind of D minor, right? like that you should try to see if you can play it through the scale right? so don't just think of it as a lick that you have to play as it is right like you can experiment and you should practice uh, playing into the lick Try to play something, go out of the lick in a different way. Just try to improvise. Or try to come up with some rhythmic variation. try to uh, play do something with the lick that's just something that Scott Henderson talked about all the time that he was he always favored shorter licks they shouldn't be too complicated or too long basically but short phrases that you could it's easier to manipulate and kind of tweak them so of course I'm sweeping this right I've also heard him play, I don't think he does it here, but he plays this as a diminished pattern. So that could be some kind of a G7 or B flat 7, right? If you know your diminished stuff, symmetrical diminished, half whole. So we're gonna use that over invitation. I'm gonna slow it down a bit here so you hear it as triplets those were six tuplets i think i hope Not super clean. I, I'm not as good as Jonathan Kreisberg. So if you can play triplets, this is a... It's like an eighth note phrase, right? If you 
can play that as triplets or sextuplets, that's really, really cool, right? Okay, so we're gonna keep both those licks and use them over invitation later on. Uh, here's another one that I hear him play. <laughs> Those are five notes. So again, I'm not claiming that I know that he's doing exactly that. I haven't, I'm guessing that he's doing this. I mean, fingering wise. It makes sense to do that. There might be some trick that he's doing that I'm not realizing, but again, it's like I, you could, if you could find footage of him and watch him, but for me, this is this works, so it doesn't really matter too much if I might be mistaken, right? So these are, could be played as quintuplets. Or as a kind of two notes and then a triplet. Or as a, a five note grouping, like 16th notes. And I do have a video on odd note groupings in the style of Dave Holland. Dave Holland is uh, all about odd note groupings. So that you could also use over invitation, right? C minor. So it's a C minor arpeggio. And it's like an arpeggio, five note arpeggio. So we tend to forget those when we're practicing our patterns. So I go up to the ninth and you can find the same shape a fifth away in the same key, right? So from G. Then you could play the same thing in octave higher. He does that too. This one, uh, I'm using legato like hammer ons. I find it hard to get really clean like he can. So that's exactly what I'm looking for. I'm looking for something like that that I can inject into my own vocabulary, and then I can throw in a. So just a word on that, because I know some people are, they're kind of against the idea of stealing licks. I think you know that I'm all for it. So there's a difference between transcribing licks. If you hear something that you like, you should figure it out. Transcribe it just to see what it is. Sometimes it can be really hard. There could be some kind of secret in how it's performed. Like if it's a Alan Holsworth thing or something, some crazy stretch or fingering technique that you need to figure out before you can play it. So don't pick something that is too outside of the realm of, of, of what you think you can actually do, right? I think it's a good idea to do that, to transcribe, because you're building your, vocab vo your vocabulary by doing that. And all the players that I like, they do that. Like George Benson says in his video that he steals licks all the time. And you can hear, I hear mm. certain players in other players playing. I hear... Django Reinhardt in George Benson's playing, and here West Montgomery in Pat Metheny's playing, etc. So we should definitely do that. It's also a good idea to lift or transcribe whole solos because then you get inside of the head of that player and you learn how to kind of build a solo and like a, there's a bigger picture there, right? Like how you build a solo and how you kind of tell a longer story. But you should also transcribe cool licks because we need to build our arsenal of licks, right? What you don't want to do is you don't want to only do that. And if all you have is a bunch of licks from a famous musician, then, you know, it's not going to be that interesting. That happens to a lot of people. Like they have to get later on, they might transcribe everything by a certain player. And then later they find that they have kind of, they have to get rid of that because it sounds too much like that if I hear somebody play and I'm listening and all of a sudden they play the most obvious lick from somebody, it can be a little bit kind of, I don't know, disappointing almost. So also you should be a careful 
of you don't want to steal like the most trademark licks of certain players. Like for example, you have Pat Metheny, he plays this kind of stuff. That kind of thing, right? And if you play that stuff in your own playing, you I mean you can do you can do it, but it can be a little bit of a problem because like it sounds like oh you're just trying to sound like Pat Metheny, you know what I mean? Which could be cool, but just be a little bit careful with that stuff. I also find it interesting that if you're playing licks of a really like old, like long time dead musician, people think it's fine. But if you're playing licks by a current play, if I play like Kurt Rosenwinkel stuff, then it bothers people. I don't know why that is, but maybe you maybe you know why that is. So I know some musicians think they've learned a few phrases from a certain players, but all they can do, right, is they can kind of play that lick in the right place, but they have no personality of their own. That's something you want to avoid. So by all means, transcribe your favorite players and the licks that you like when you hear them. It's fun and it's fun to kind of incorporate it into tunes that you know, right? But don't that shouldn't be all you're doing. And you're Playing shouldn't be based on flashy, impressive, super hip licks. There, again, like with Jonathan Kreisberg, there's so much more to his playing. Like he's telling stories with his playing. He's a composer and he's a fantastic improviser. And so I'm not saying that, you know, these flashy licks is all that there is to it. I hope that makes some sense. Let's move on with more licks. <laughs> Again, we have this chromatic, and I guess it's pentatonic, and again the side slipping. So he seems to favor certain techniques, right? The chromatic and the eighth note phrases. Then he does something, he switches to triplets. That's what, uh, what's his name? Uh, Jerry Bergonzi calls switching gears. So I guess this could be E flat minor, maybe. you've learned the lick you should try to tweak it and kind of try to improvise around that lick <laughs> like it's some kind of dim symmetrical diminished situation but it's like a G minor 6 arpeggio to E7 back to the G minor 6. Both of those arpeggios can be find, found in the E half whole scale. So it could be some kind of... Or I could just take this. That's very... It's just a minor 6 arpeggio. It's like that Jack Reinhardt tune. Right? the minor six so that could be also used over invitation 
It's possible that he's considering this some kind of side slipping. There's another thing that he does, he plays these kind of arpeggios. So those are dominant arpeggios, flat five, so E dominant. Half step to regular first, but then flat five. So this is inspired by some stuff that he does. So you could use pull offs here too hammer offs and pull offs. So this could be used in the where you know there's a B flat flat five chord in invitation. those arpeggios or I don't use those arpeggios too often but flat five dominant flat five it's a great sound then there's one more lick that he does it's the same thing that we kind of doing before the five note arpeggio he'll play it but he'll go up and to the E flat and then oct octave higher Sweeps. That's a pretty cool lick for you. So if we transpose it to C, again we're at invitation. get clean. Ah. Sorry, I'm getting a little excited. In the process of doing this, you notice certain things the five note grouping, it does a lot of this kind of. So imagine C melodic minor. So a C, E flat, major seven sharp five, to F7, to G7. Those are five notes. That seems to be a thing that he does quite a lot. So five note groupings is often overlooked, but not by Jonathan Kreisberg. So that's something that I picked up from this. So it's not that I'm gonna go to my next uh, gig or jam session and just play, a, oh look, I got a few Kreisberg licks and everybody's gonna go, oh wow. No, it's like I'm getting ideas from it and I'm trying to sneak it into my playing, right? That's the whole idea. So now finally, let's look at the little etude that I made for you. By the way, as always, these on my Patreon page. So here's the little etude. I started with this lick. The first lick we played, and then this. And then the same thing in E flat. So 
so I'll just play it for you. For some reason in iReal Pro, the invitation is broken, but it's called Afro One. I don't know if it's just my iReal Pro. So if you try to use invitation, it doesn't work, but the Afro One is, no, Afro Two, sorry. Afro Two, here we go. That's how I do. I steal licks from players that I like, things that I hear that I like. And you should do that too. So remember, don't just uh, take the licks I showed you. The idea here is to inspire you to do the same thing with the players that you like. So steal from your favorite players and by all means, not just guitar players. Because again, if you steal the most obvious licks from the most obvious guitar players, you can sound like you're just trying to copy someone else, right? So you need to find your own voice. And a good idea to do that is to lift solos transcribed from other instruments than guitar as well. And other genres and other styles of music, world music, folk music, what have you. So I hope you enjoyed that and I shall see you next.